Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome to today's Wild Rift guide. In today's guide, we're taking a look at the dragon from Wild Rift, Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul is a mid lane mage. He is a very unique champion that loves to roam around the map with all of his stars. With Aurelian Soul, your main focus is to do as much damage as possible with the stars that orbit around him. These stars can be pushed further out to orbit around Aurelian Soul faster and deal more damage when necessary. Taking a quick look through Aurelian Soul's build, you want to build a lot of ability power to allow his stars that orbit around him to deal more damage. But you also want to build a little bit of tankiness as well because Aurelian Soul likes to be at the front line using his stars and using his crowd control to zone the enemies. A little bit of tankiness will also help him to make sure he doesn't get one shot by any source of damage. Rod of Ages we got as the first item. Gives you that little bit of maximum health and ability power. And it also scales well into the mid and the late game as well. You have the Veteran Passive which allows you to get a stack every 45 seconds. Which gives you maximum health, gives you mana and also gives you ability power up to a maximum of 10 stacks. After Rod of Ages we have Ravenon's Death Cap. Just gives you a lot of ability power and also increases your overall ability power as well by 40 percent for the boots mercury's is normally the best option for aurelian soul to give you that tenacity which reduces the duration of stuns slows taunts fears silences blinds and immobilizes um which works really well with aurelian soul especially because you will be at the front line if you do get hit by any crowd control this will all be reduced and then you have stasis as well as the boots upgrade to make sure that if you do dive a little bit far you can use stasis which also still allows your stars around you to orbit so you could still deal more damage when you're in stasis Void Staff gives you more ability power and also gives you that magic penetration. At this point in the game, there might be a lot of champions that are building magic resistance against you. So getting a Void Staff, getting that little bit of magic penetration is very helpful. Morella Nomicon gives you a little bit of tankiness and the ability power. Gives you a little bit more magic penetration, but the main factor of Morella Nomicon is a Grievous Wounds passive. Previous runes reduces the healing of enemy champions that are hit, and this works on your stars as well. So if you hit multiple enemies with your stars, they'll all be inflicted with Grievous Wounds, which will help a lot with Rolling Soul, allowing him to deal more damage. And then for the last item, Infinity Orb, again, a little bit more maximum health and ability power. Also allows your abilities to critical strike as well. So when you push the stars out with Rolling Soul, when they orbit around you really quickly, if the enemies are low on health, each star that hits will be able to critical strike as well when they're below 35% health. So really really good overall a one item or two items i will really like to mention as well is a combo of leandri's tournament and um Riley's crystal scepter uh, both these items work really really well together the only problem is is that they're not really that strong at the moment especially leandri's tournament kind of been nerfed to the ground to be fair with the extra damage that it deals but if you do want to go for a more utility build that can give Aurelian Soul slows on his stars. You can go for Rhylite's Crystal Scepter as well. Also gives you a little bit more tankiness as well. So you can swap this out for maybe Infinity Orb or Morella Nomicon if you don't need any anti-heal. But just two items there to mention. And obviously, uh, Rhylite's Crystal Scepter works really well with Leandri's Torment because if you do slow, then you'll be able to deal more damage with Leandri's Torment. Onto the runes. Go to rune for pretty much every champion at the moment. Conqueror, really, really nice rune. Every single time your star hits, you'll pretty much gain a stack of adaptive force. And when you reach 10 or 5 stacks of adaptive force, you'll be able to deal more AP damage. Brutal just helps Aurelian Soul pretty much at all stages of the game, especially in the early game, just to deal more damage. And this also helps you clear the minion wave early on as well. Once you reach level 3, you want to try and roam around the map. So getting that little bit of early AP to push out the minion wave early on can help Aurelian Soul roam around the map. Hunter Titan, you don't really want to fight early on with Aurelian Soul, so Adaptive Carapace is not really that helpful. Hunter Titan just gives you that scaling health and also gives you a little bit of tenacity as well. On top of the Mercury Treads will help Aurelian Soul a lot against Crowd Control. And for loss on, we have Sweet Tooth as well. If you do get low on health, if you do get low on mana, you can go back to Honey Fruit, get that extra 25% healing, and you also get a little bit of extra gold as well. For the runes, Flash do some really flashy combos with Aurelian Soul and Flash is just a go-to rune. Just be able to go forward or jump away to safety. And then you have Barrier as well, just in case you do go a little bit too deep. You can use the Barrier to protect yourself. You can also go for Ignite as well if you do want to play really aggressive. Sometimes you do get within Ignite range when you're flying across the map. So you can use Ignite to play a little bit more aggressive. But most of the time, I like to go for Barrier. But that's everything for the build. Let's head on to the abilities.
First up, we have Aurelian Soul's passive, which is Center of the Universe. Stars orbit Aurelian Soul dealing magic damage. Now, this is Aurelian Soul's main damage output. You don't really do a lot of damage from auto attacks. But as you can see, when you get into game with Aurelian Soul, you'll see that there's stars that orbit around Aurelian Soul. And when you walk up to this target army, for example, every time a star hits, you'll be able to deal damage. Now, the main tip I want to give you with the stars is that you can see the stars are going in an anti-clockwise direction. So most of the time, what you want to do is you want to go the opposite way around, which means that the stars will hit more often. So if I walk in a clockwise direction, you can see that the stars are hitting a lot more often than when, if I just stand still, for example. So making sure you move in the opposite direction will allow you to deal more damage. If I walk like the opposite way around, for example, or the same way around, sorry, you can see that my stars are not hitting as much. So most of the time, when you're moving around champions, you want to try and move around as much as possible to make sure that you can hit as many star points as possible as well. Moving on to Star Surge, Aurelian Soul's first ability, fires a new bomb star that detonates upon reaching the outer limit. The star expands as it travels, dealing magic damage and stunning from between just under a second to over two seconds based on the time travel. A Star Surge can also be recast as well to detonate early. So as you can see with the ability, if I use the ability and if I stand still, you can see when it does reach the outer limit, you can see the outer limit by the uh, outer circle of the uh, the stars or where the stars are, you can see the outer circle and it kind of shows with the limit as well of how far the first ability can be used. So when I use it, when it reaches the outer circle, it detonates automatically. If I use it and then press it again, you can activate it before. But the most important thing with this ability is you can actually move to make sure that you can deal more damage get the stun off earlier and you can also travel further as well with the first ability so making sure that you know kind of the limits with the first ability making sure that it doesn't reach the outer circle beforehand because you can move and if you stop moving obviously you can stop at the outer circle but if you keep moving and if you keep moving and moving and moving until it hits a target dummy then you can see that you can reactivate the ability at any time it doesn't have to reach the outer circle and you'll be able to stun the enemy champions Moving on, Aurelian Soul's second ability, Celestial Expansion. Uh, the passive is that the stars get to deal increased damage. You also have an active as well, which pushes his stars out to the outer limit for a few seconds, causing them to orbit faster and deal more damage. And when the stars retract, Aurelian Soul gains a little bit of decay and movement speed over time. So when you use this, you can see that the outer ring, you can see that the stars will orbit faster. You'll be able to deal more damage with the stars. And like, like it's mentioned afterwards, you'll be able to get a little bit of extra movement speed. As you can see, if I hold the second ability here, you can see the outer circle kind of radius of the ability. So you can see at the moment I'm not hitting the target dummy, but when I use it, you can see that I'm hitting the target dummy. The stars are moving faster and I also get to deal more damage. Now, the most important thing is to always move in a clockwise direction. So when I'm using my first ability in combination with my second ability i use my first ability stun and then use my second ability and you can see that i'm always going to be moving in a clockwise direction because you want to move in the opposite way around that the stars are moving to make sure that you deal more damage now one of iranian soul's coolest abilities is his third ability comet of legend which kind of makes iranian soul a very unique champion and kind of makes his playstyle what it is you have a passive which gradually gains movement speed while moving in the same direction up to 20 percent and the active as well. You've got takes flight, gaining the ability to see and travel over walls for a few seconds. Taking damage from champions will end this flight. Now, the great thing about the third ability is that you can combo it with Star Surge, the first ability as well, which makes Aurelian Souls roams really, really strong. So when I'm trying to roam down to the duo lane, for example, I can use the first ability and then use the third ability straight afterwards as well. And as you can see, Star Surge, the first ability will get bigger, which means the damage will increase, the stun will be increased as well. And and then you can combo that with your second ability afterwards as well when you land a stun as you can see it's it's really really powerful i can use this towards the target dummies as well just to show you how much damage and what it can do so you can combo that with your second ability afterwards as well and you can deal a lot of damage so making sure that you know how to combo the first ability and the third ability is what makes Aurelian Soul really, really strong. Now, one thing I have to mention, though, is that the third ability has a really, really long cooldown. You can see 40 seconds cooldown. So you don't want to use this to get back to lane to kind of roam around if you don't really need to. So you need to make sure you use your third ability wisely. Make sure you look around the mini map at all times. Make sure you see if there's any gank opportunities. Push out in the mid wave and then try and roam and get an advantage elsewhere on the map. And lastly, for the ultimate, we have Voice of Light. Excels Starfire, dealing magic damage and slowing by 60% for a few seconds. 
enemies hit are knocked back to the outer limit. Now, that's the important part of the of this ability is that the enemies are going to be hit to the outer limit. So say, for example, if I was on top of someone like the target dummy, if I was to use my ultimate, they'll be hit to the outer limit, which means you can actually combo that, as you can see, with your second ability. Because if you remember, the second ability will expand the stars out to the outer limit. Now, you can also combo the first ability with the ultimate as well, because the first ability will be stunning at the outer limit. So when you're using your first ability, before it reaches the outer limit, if you use your ultimate, as you can see, you can combo your ultimate with your first ability, and then you can combo that with your second ability as well. So they'll be stunned, but also they'll be slowed as well from the ultimate, and you'll be able to deal more damage as well with your stars. Now, a cool flashy combo as well you can use with your ultimate. If you do use your ultimate a little bit out of place, you can quickly use your flash to actually make sure that you can hit your ultimate. So say, for example, if I was to accidentally use my ultimate here, for example, and I wanted to try and hit the target dummy, I can use flash straight afterwards, and as you can see, it will actually push the target dummy to the outer limit. I can go a little bit look closer to the target dummy as well, just to show you. If I use my ultimate, I use my flash, as you can see, it kind of makes for a little cool combo. Wouldn't really recommend to use this too much, but you can use this in the opposite di uh, direction as well. Say, for example, if you're in front of an enemy or if you want to move them to your uh, to your team, for example, you can use this and then flash behind. And as you can see, you can move them in pretty much any direction. So you can make some cool flashy plays like that. Wouldn't really recommend it. Most of the time it's used as kind of a front line when you are on the front line with Aurelian Soul. It's more used as sort of a crowd control for the slow and allowing you to hit your second ability as well, as mentioned. Because when you hit to the outer limit you can use this in combo with your second ability with your first ability as well and as you can see you can just deal a lot of damage now talking quickly about counters for aurelian soul obviously aurelian soul doesn't really like champions that like to get on top of him because that means he won't do any damage with his stars because as you can tell with aurelian soul the stars are quite far away from him so champions like zed Fizz, Katarina, and Yasuo are really, really hard counters to Aurelian Soul because they'll be able to get in melee range of Aurelian Soul, which means that he won't be able to deal as much damage. And he likes to play against other mages that like to keep their distance as well. That means that he can keep his distance to make sure he does more damage. Now, in terms of synergies, you've got champions like uh, Yumi, which is really, really strong. You'll be able to get the extra movement speed and deal more damage as well with the stars. And any sort of other crowd control, really, you know, Misfortune could do really well because if you land a really big star for you, can combo that with the bullet time malphite mumu any champions like that just any sort of crowd control that aurelian soul can follow up afterwards is quite nice Taking a quick look at the skill order at level 1 with Aurelian Soul, you want to go for your second ability. Now, with Aurelian Soul in the early game, you don't really do too well when you're trying to fight the enemy champion. So, the best thing you want to do is trying to push out the minion waves. This will allow you to just roam around the map, maybe help your jungler as well at the same time. At level 2, you can go for your first ability to try and get some short trades, but you don't want to stay there for long. As mentioned, if you're against an assassin like a Zed or someone, they could jump on top of you and do a lot of damage because you don't really do a lot of damage with your auto attacks. It's more about keeping your distance between you and the enemy champion to deal more damage and then level three this is when you can look to start to roam you'll be able to get your third ability which will allow you to roam around the map so make sure you always keep your eye on the mini map to make sure that you can try and look to maybe get an advantage elsewhere and what you want to do is you want to max your second ability this will increase the base damage and also lower the cooldown and just allow your stars to deal more damage which is the most important part with Aurelian soul then for the first ability you want to max that second because the third ability doesn't really give you any combat stats the first ability just reduces the cooldown allows you to do more damage and then after that you want to go for your third ability for your third ability every time you level up it reduces the cooldown not by a lot and maximum level will still be like a 40 35 second cooldown so make sure that you use your third ability wisely all right on to the gameplay with Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul was quite a fun champion to play, to be honest. A very unique champion, very fun to play as well. His roaming potential, as mentioned already, is uh, really, really cool and really, really fun to uh, kind of master as well at the same time because Aurelian Soul is quite a difficult champion to play. I wouldn't say that he's the strongest at the moment as well. But hopefully this video and hopefully this guide in general will just give you a few tips and tricks and hopefully give you that bit of an edge over the opponent. So I'm against an Ari in this lane. Uh, the main thing I want to do against Ari is just push her out as much as possible. But you can see what Ari's doing here as well. Ari's doing a really, really good thing and being able to push out the minion wave as well at the same time. Because Ari does quite well with the uh, Orbs of Deception. Um, if you haven't checked out my uh, Ari guide, make sure you check that out as well. I'm doing a whole A to Z guide, uh, which is really, really cool. So every single champion in the game might take me a little bit of time. But uh, it's something I can, I'm committed to because I want to help out new players uh, learn, some, uh, learn some few champions. 
So you can see here, tried to land my first ability, it didn't land. As you can see, my main focus here is just to try and push out the mini wave as quick as possible. And when I push out the mini wave, I can try and look to roam around the map. But unfortunately, my leasing was kind of AFK at the start of the game. So there isn't really a scuttle crab or anything to roam towards at the moment. And unfortunately, I'm not level 3 as well. But as mentioned, with the running soul, you don't really want to fight early on. You don't really want to trade or anything because you don't really do a lot of damage. Uh, your main purpose with Aurelian Soul is just to roam around the map. You want to roam around the map. You want to make sure you try and get advantages elsewhere on the map as well. Uh, another cool thing about Aurelian Soul as well is your auto attack range. So when you auto attack, is actually the exact same as your outer limit. Uh, which is what you get from your second ability. You push your stars to the outer limit. So if you keep spamming your auto attack button, or if you just hold your auto attack, bu uh, auto attack button, you'll kind of see your outer range limit the whole time, which is quite nice. So as you can see, Lisa is trying to get the scuttle crab early on. And unfortunately, I can't really roam because Ari is doing really well pushing in the minion wave as well. So Ari will be able to get that roam advantage, which means that uh, Lee Sin won't be able to get the uh, the scuttle crab early on. As you can see, they're fighting at the moment, so I'm just trying to push this minion wave. And this is where I mentioned about a mid lane priority. As you can see here, I'm able to use my star, get to the outer limit, get a little bit of damage down onto the Ari as I need to mute the audio because of text to speech. I still haven't sorted it out. Hopefully, it will be uh, very, very soon. But Mozilla's just. Uh, trolling me in uh, in text to speech on uh, on the stream when i'm playing this game so yeah as you can see you you can roam very very well especially with the starfire uh, star fall or the starfire at the same time unfortunately i wasn't able to get a kill but i was able to help my team a little bit and kind of protect them which you can look to try and do at the same time you don't have to always use your roaming potential to try and get a kill you can try and look to maybe help your team kind of let them calm down a little bit and let them push out the wave themselves uh, Galio, interestingly enough, is mid lane. Support Galio, by the way, just roaming around casually in uh, in the mid lane. So as you can see here, when I'm roaming around, when I'm when I'm trying to move around as well, when I'm trying to hit uh, enemy champions or when I'm trying to hit the minion wave, I always want to try and look to try and move in the opposite direction to my stars. And this is where the combo comes in. First ability in combo with my third ability. Unfortunately, we did get uh, we didn't get anything, you know, in terms of damage, but we did get a flash out from um, from from Lucian. You can see Galio is trying to engage here. And look, three-man ulti stops the Galio ulti, slows them as well at the same time. And we do get a nice bit of damage. You can see as well, my first ability, I was able to stun the Lucian as well at the same time. We did unfortunately get hit by the Ori charm, but that's completely fine with us. We got a little bit of tankiness. We can deal a little bit of damage as well. Tristana is able to jump around and land another stun onto Ori as well. And we get another kill. So a big, big advantage in the early game. You can see that your initial roam might not be able to work out. But the main thing was I was able to get Lucian's flash. So he wasn't able to escape from Tristana. But another cool thing as well that I actually want to mention. Which is a kind of a, a different tip that I explained in the abilities. I can't want to go back a little bit. I want to focus on this last kill that I got on Ari here. Now, what I did with the Ari is that when I'm using my first ability here, you'll see I'm pausing it because I kind of want to explain it. When I'm using my first ability here, the main purpose is I'm walking away from the Starfire. So I'm walking away from myself. That's because I want the Starfire to reach the outer limit to make sure I can get the stun. Now, you can do this the other way if you want to. You can just press the first ability if you want to to recast it. Uh, but sometimes you can do this the other way. As you can see, you can use it to kind of move in the opposite direction so your star fall will be able to activate immediately and as you can see i was able to kill off ari land in the starfire and uh dealing a lot of damage so one kill three assists on the board very very nice early game and just shows you how much impact a radiant soul can give when he's roaming around the map Back to mid lane now. I'm just going to push out this minion wave and probably go back to base to get my Rod of Ages. The thing is with Rod of Ages is that you want to get Rod of Ages as soon as possible to just allow the stacks to keep on going as much as possible. As mentioned already with the build, you kind of just want to go for Death Cap as a second item. You can go for a tier 2 item like maybe Prophet's Pendant if you want to early on or maybe Oblivion Orb if they have a lot of healing. Um, but you don't really want to go for that Rhyde Ice Crystal Scepter um haunting guys combo with running soul anymore you just want to deal as much damage as possible and uh, the main reason being is that they kind of nerfed the andrews tournament to the ground but it is a really good utility combo you know if you do want slows and if you don't really want to deal as much damage you want to be focused more on slows you can do it in that sort of you can go in that sort of direction as well if you want to uh, i kind of messed up my stun a little bit there i could have reactivated my stun to probably kill the wukong but unfortunately i didn't i kind of messed up a little bit as you can see, we're roaming around the map now. We're just trying to clear out the mid lane so we can go towards the Rift Herald. Ari here, just trying to move around. Riven trying to get a little bit of damage off as well, but unfortunately not. 
But yeah, Set doing set things. Set is still uh, really, really strong at the moment. And uh, he's just doing set things. But as you can see, we land the stun there. We do a little bit of damage. We could have maybe followed up as well. But unfortunately, wasn't able to get there. But my ultimate, I'm trying to knock Wukong away at the moment. And as you can see, I knocked Wukong into my team, into the enemy tower. And I was able to uh, get the kill as well onto Wukong. Combo in my uh, my first ability with my ultimate. So really, really nice there. And just shows you that even if you do get out of position and the enemies are kind of in amongst you, I guess you can say you can still use your ultimate to push them out. And sometimes you can use it in the opposite way to push them towards your team or even push them towards your tower. So a few little tricks there uh, with Aurelian Soul. And what gives me this early lead as well is just... Being able to know your limits with Aurelian Soul. Obviously, with Aurelian Soul, you don't want to... Um, what's the word called? You don't want to get in melee range with champions. Because when you get in into melee range, then your stars won't be able to deal any damage at all. Um, so, it's just about creating your distance and being able to do a lot of damage. As you can see, Ori still does a lot of damage to me. Aurelian Soul isn't really the tankiest champion. So, that's why you want to build Rod of Ages to just make sure that you can... Be that little bit tankier as well at the same time because you, most of the time you will be at the front line. Uh, so here I'm just looking around the minimap at the moment. I'm trying to look around to see where I can try and gank. I'm looking in the bot lane at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, Riven did die before I tried to roam. And you can see Set going back to tower, so there's not really anything I can do there. I'm trying to get picks off in the mid lane at the moment and just trying to get that mid lane priority. But Ari's doing really, really well at trying to push out the mid wave as well. You can see how... How much Ari can do as well with the wave clear. Luckily enough, I, <laughs> I dodged the charm there. It was looking a little bit scary. You can see I'm trying to do as much damage as possible. But <laughs> fortunately for me, Galio kind of messed up in the way. Galio used the flash and then um, used the dash afterwards. Which means that he wasn't able to flash taunt instead. Probably would have liked to see Galio use like flash taunt to try and catch me out. Uh, but you can see here, Galio interesting enough using ultimate on Ari. Not really too sure why. As you can see, we're just trying to do as much damage as possible to Ari. Maybe try and get the killing blow, which we were able to do. My ult, my W wasn't able to do enough damage. As you can see, you know, champions like Wukong that can get in and amongst the Radiant Soul when you don't have your ultimate available. It's really hard to do a lot of damage to them champions because you can stun them with your first ability, yes. But if they have tenacity, they'll be able to quickly jump onto you again. And that's why champions within melee range really, really hurt a Radiant Soul, especially when he doesn't have his ultimate. So... A little bit of an overextension there, in my opinion. I was trying to kill off the Ori because she was so, so low on health. But I should have just left it to my Janna and just escape because I didn't have my ultimate. Wukong was able to jump on top of me, use the ultimate, and just easily kill me off. So just, that kind of shows you there um, how kind of melee champions and how champions that can get on top of Radiant Soul can kind of be a downside to him. Um, but still, either way, pretty good early start to this game. 3, 1, and 6. Uh, we nearly got our Rabidon's Death Cup now on top of the... Uh, Rod of Ages, which is quite nice. Uh, but yeah, Ari is uh, Ari's quite good at clearing waves, as you can see. You know, with Running Soul, you want to try and clear the minion waves as quick as possible so you can roam around the map. But Ari's doing really well here to, to uh, push out the minion wave herself. So, so Lisa's going to try and go behind here, trying to uh, kill the set. I'm using my Q here to try and land it onto the Ari. But I didn't want to go too... You see how I'm ke keeping my distance the entire time as well? I don't want to go too close to the champions because I know if I go too close, I can be hit by a charm. I can be suplexed by the um, by the set at the same time. You can see here, I'm trying so, so hard to kill Ari. I went a little bit too deep. I was trying to kill Ari and I was trying to kill Lucian again. But a uh, little bit of an overextension. I call that limit testing. Um, we were able to kill off the Ari. We weren't able to kill off the uh, the Lucian in the end. But still, we were able to get a tower off it. We are able to get a few kills, which um, still works well. I'll still take it as a win. You, you know, if you type hashtag worth in the chat, I'm sure it'll be uh, be completely fine. Tristana gets, is getting a, uh, a little bit caught out here. But yeah, Tristana's really far ahead. And kind of the main reason why Tristana is really far ahead is because we were able to roam in the early game. As mentioned, you know, with Running Soul, it's not really about you getting ahead. It's about helping your team get ahead with the roams. Now, even though the initial roam in the early game didn't really help out Tristana, it was kind of the exchange afterwards. It was keeping our distance, dealing as much damage as possible, using our Starfire to uh, root the enemies. As you can see, I'm uh, kind of limit testing a little bit. Calio messes up with the Flash. I'm using my second ability and trying to keep my distance as well at the same time. But yeah, I kind of messed up a little bit in this situation. Um, what I should have done in this situation, I, I'm kind of flaming my, on my webcam, but you can't really see it. 
Well, I should have done this situation as I, as I should have used my ultimate a lot earlier. Now, even though your ultimate kind of pushes enemies away, it slows them down. It makes sure that you kind of reach the outer ring. And that kind of shows there why Radiant Soul can be really hard to play. Because your main damage sources are from your stars. You want to make sure that you're always hitting your stars as much as possible. Which can be a little bit hard because the champions or the enemy champions can kind of dodge towards you in a way. Which can be really, really difficult. As you can see, I got enough damage there to be able to uh, kill off the Ari with the help of Tristana. And yeah, champions can kind of dodge towards you, which is kind of a little bit weird in a way, but also a little bit interesting as well, because you want to make sure that they'll be able to, you know, they want to kind of dodge your stars in a way. And if they keep on moving away from you, you can use your ultimate, you can use your outer ring to just deal enough damage. And if they move towards you, it's actually going to benefit the enemies in a way. But there you go. Just a quick game there to show you kind of the few tips and tricks and kind of few mistakes that I made with Aurelian Soul as well. 11,000 damage, not as much as Tristana, but you can see the kind of benefits of early game running Soul, how you can rotate around the map and how you can benefit from the early rotations. But yeah, anyway, thank you very much for tuning in to today's guide. Make sure you tune into the next guide as well. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. As always, make sure you like the video, comment and subscribe to the channel for more Wild Rift guides. And as always, I'll see you all very, very soon. Peace.